Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson, serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years. Hi, I'm Cherry Johnson with Watauga County Arts Council, and you probably already are aware, or if not, I don't know where you've been, that we've just opened the Blue Ridge Art Space. It is such an exciting place to be, and so many wonderful things to see and experience and be a part of, and you need to be sure you come by. I want to introduce you to Pat Grant. Uh, Pat is not just a beautiful, uh, paints beautiful paintings, and we'll talk about these in a second. Pat's also a man of many trades, and you painted the walls, many of them, in the Blue Ridge Art Space before we opened up. You and some other friends and volunteers of, of the Blue Ridge Art Space, so uh, you kind of have a, a lot of different backgrounds and talents and abilities that kind of flowed into the process. <laughs> <laughs> Everything we could do to help. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we're featuring Pat's work. As you walk into the main door of, of the Blue Ridge Art Space, you'll pass through the uh, Hall of Fame and then you will move into the main gallery area and all over the walls are these amazing animals and birds and creatures of nature all around you and many of them look like they're going to jump up and start talking to you anytime now. Yep, yep. So <laughs> I, I like to paint things that people normally don't get to see every day. Right. Uh, things that maybe they do see and never stop to look uh -huh. at. You know, something that's going to catch their eye and make them stop and look at it and appreciate it. Right. Uh, a lot of our wildlife is vanishing quickly, so you just don't have those opportunities. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this will save some of it for people. Yeah. Now we have two of them today with us, yeah, but there's yeah. a whole wealth of these. You have 29 paintings? 29 paintings yeah. at the, the art space. And they're space. all different animals and different creatures yep, yep. and different birds and different whatever. Yeah, I like variety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yes, I like variety. <laughs> and uh, uh, they all are of acrylic. Yes, yes. But like you and cool. I were just talking a while ago, uh, a lot of artists take a look at Pat's work. I did. I looked at Pat's work and I went, I think it's acrylic. Not sure if it's acrylic, because you you act like acrylics are oils in a lot of ways. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. acrylics are just so versatile. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Where people like to glaze and do layer painting, uh, acrylics I can do in five minutes. I yeah. can do a layer. Wait a minute, do something in another area of the painting, and then go right back to it. Right. And it makes it. It dries it, very it's, fast. It, yes. Uh -huh. uh, it suits. A, I'm a fidgety person, so it suits the temperament <laughs> quite well. Well, I want to talk about you as a person. Now, you grew up in Florida? Yeah, Daytona Beach. Yeah. And uh, you said that you didn't do a whole lot of art, but you did do yeah, some I did some drawing, drawing and stuff. Uh -huh. I did a little painting in school uh -huh. like everybody's forced to do. Right. And, uh, and it was in oil, actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, I did have a start in that. But I never pursued it. Um, yeah. I was a quiet student, so... I think they, they search out the, the you were most. A quiet student. Yeah, I was. <laughs> they, they search out the most uh, you know popular person uh -huh. in class because it's easy to teach somebody that's very eager and very outspoken. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not something I really pursued then, okay. but I guess I always had that little ability or want to in me. And then you kind of went off into the restaurant business. Yeah, I was in the restaurant business for many years. Okay. Uh, my dad was military, so uh -huh. he believed that every man should learn how to cook. Okay. And so having two brothers, all three of us from a very early age, we learned to cook, we learned to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so the restaurant business was just a, a comfortable environment. Right. Uh, my parents were in it, uh, friends were in it. You know, uh -huh. people I grew up mm -hmm. with did it. So it was just natural. And then tell us about your evolution, how you got from Florida to North Carolina. Now, my brother moved here uh, in the 80s, or early 80s. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I came up and helped him move up here. And when I did, I, I just, I love the place. Uh -huh. you know, it's, this is so vastly different than Florida. I, I don't understand how people that go to Florida go to Florida. I mean, if you've lived here, why would you want to leave? <laughs> Teach us <laughs> but, but we, we, uh, I met my wife in Florida, and her family's from Hendersonville. Mm -hmm. And so we both had a, a draw to, to be here. And it was just a process. We knew we wanted to be here, and we knew eventually we'd just creep our way up. And uh, we, we got lucky, you know. We, we had some nice moves. We went to South Carolina, closer. Uh, we could come up and visit a couple times a month. And then we, when we moved to Greenville, it was every, almost every weekend. Just kept inching your way yeah, up this way. Yeah, when you start spending more time in the next place than you did in the previous, it's, it's a, time to move you, on. you need to go. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Now, as my understanding from, from our conversations is that your brother renovated a house. Yep, yep. And that got you started in the yep. process. So talk about that a second. I have a very generous family, and, and my brother knew that I, I didn't like where I was at. Mm -hmm. You know, the restaurant business, you don't see a lot of old managers. 
And I was in management. And when you look around, it's hard on people. Uh -huh. it, uh -huh. Mentally, it, it's a stressful business. And uh, he was nice enough to have a little piece of, of property. It was an old country store on, on his property and was willing to help me get started. You know, it, it, when, when my wife looked at me like I was a nut. I mean, she saw the building, it was leaning and it was full of garbage. It hadn't been used in 15 years and she said, you know, I don't know. But she wanted to be here too. Uh -huh. And so between us and my brother's help and his family that we just, we dug in. And it was it, it, a place that had nobody in it. It needed extreme renovation, but you learn. Uh, one, when you're doing it yourself and you're getting dirty uh -huh. in it, you learn how to do it and it was fun. Yeah. You know, it's like discovering anything, it's the same way of painting. Right. You know, once you get the hook, then you, you just can't quit. Well, and that's where I'm going is because I know people are out there going, what is she talking about all that for? The reason is, is because the way you got back into painting or really into the painting had something to do with that. Am yeah, I right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I did renovating, a, a good friend uh, introduced me to just house painting. Right. He said, you know, you'll love doing this. He said, it's fun. Uh-huh. And I was always the one that looked at painting like, fun yeah, painting a house can't possibly be fun but, but it's yeah but, but it's a developed skill I mean if you paint in a very fine home you really need to learn how to paint well yes and so by learning that the the more uh, house paintings like anything else you learn about color mm -hmm. you learn about uh, values and then with the difference between a dark room and a light room and how to deal with paint and how to yeah, deal with that paint that is a talent unto itself uh, yes yes it is and uh I, I think it's just an addiction. The more uh -huh. you do it, the more you want to learn. I, I right. love learning. So I met a friend who also was, did restoration work, and he was an a extremely accomplished artist. Uh -huh. uh, did fine art, had studied classically in New York. Right. I mean, had studied art since he was a child. Uh -huh. And well beyond my means at the time, but I found it fascinating. Uh -huh. And he did, he did wildlife. He did very detailed work. So without having any other exposure, I assume that's what you should it's do. kind of got into it. <laughs> <laughs> you should be able to do that right off the bat, which I learned very quickly you couldn't do. Some horrible drawings buried in the, in the studio at the house. <laughs> but you learn. Yeah. And, and like I said, it's an addiction. Once you really get the feel for especially doing mm -hmm. detailed work, you, you push yourself. And that's one thing I've really noticed about you, Pat, is that you are very uh, precise in your work. You know, not just now, you've got to get up close to these and see what I'm talking about. Every little hair is here, you know. But it's not just that. It's that you are accurate. You know, you, you do things with, with a precision. Yes, you know? yeah. It's, uh, well, that probably is the runover of military pride from my mm -hmm, father. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I wasn't in the military, but he was in 21 years. Right. And it has to be done right. You know, so you, I guess initially he wasn't one of these beating type military parents right. where, you know, he'd sit there and say you must. Do, but it's just learning that uh, you, you have to have a sense of accomplishment right. and, and that you want to be accurate with to do it. it well. Yeah, do it well. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a sense of pride. Right. Now, you renovated, I believe, the governor's mansion. Yeah, I remember the old governor Rock. in Mayview. Mm -hmm. Up in Mayview, man. And in that process, you did some faux painting? And Started doing a lot of faux finishing. Uh, in, the, in this line of work, uh -huh. when you do renovation and stuff, you meet a lot of other people. Right. And I met an accomplished faux artist who'd studied in Italy. Uh -huh. And just, I, I mean, he didn't teach me anything one-on-one, uh, -on -one, but just seeing the work was fascinating. Right. He, he did a lot of, uh, like, faux marbling. Mm -hmm. But it was to the point where you, you'd have to scratch the surface to know it wasn't. And I think that was the hook there, seeing something that was so realistic looking and yet it was wood. And it was, well, how do I learn how to do that? Uh -huh. you know, paint a house, you know, I've done that. So <laughs> how can I get better? So it's just the next step. Just uh -huh. the next step, uh -huh. yeah. But, I mean, it also takes you a step further in learning about color, right. uh, learning about mm -hmm. art. You do more studying. You know, when you teach yourself, you dig a lot. Right. And the mm -hmm. further you dig, you know, uh, the friend that got me interested in it, even as accomplished as he was, he says, I'll never learn everything. He said, it's just too encompassing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so with that in mind, it's, there's so much to learn that there's, you shouldn't feel like you can't learn it. Yeah. You just have to find what you want, what you're you know, happy with doing and, and work on that. Wow. Now, how long have you been painting like these? Uh, this type of actual painting, I probably started in the late 90s. Mm -hmm. I started initially drawing mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and was working with colored pencil. Right. Um, again, the, the the control freak. You know, uh -huh. colored pencil gives you those little it precise, lines, mm -hmm. you know, and and but it's also extremely slow. <laughs> yes. I do like to see results. So part of that was, you know, I got to find a way to go from mm -hmm. these beautiful little drawings. I mean, I did a lot of detailed work mm -hmm. initially, but I wanted to see bigger, faster things. Right. And that's where painting came in. Uh -huh. You know, it gave me the opportunity to do the same thing, a whole different medium, a lot right. more learning. You, you don't, have, you can't pull out that exact color red or that exact color green out of a box. Mm -hmm. You have to make it. Mm -hmm. But again, it's just the learning process. So you basically are self-taught in oh, those yeah, ways. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got a stack of magazines about that high, <laughs> a whole library of books. And the um, internet. The internet is one in of that. the best mm -hmm. tools in the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, that again, it's so encompassing that there are areas I find daily right. that that sites that are so helpful to artists. There are mm -hmm. sites on color, color alone. If you just Google color, there's so many things that come up, right. and there's so many people out there that are just willing to share. Mm -hmm. and that's the one thing about the art artist community is they're so willing to help people. They are, mm -hmm. you know, uh -huh. and, and and that that goes a long way. That right. just a, the pat on the back, you're doing a good job here. Yeah. This, this will make it easier mm -hmm. for you. Or, or I tried this and it worked and so I'm going to share it with you. So, and, and now a lot of your paint techniques come from your background. The, the faux finishes, yeah, the, the yeah. paint house painting, the other things you've learned along the way. You've taught yourself so much and you just kind of applied what you've learned yeah, to every new um, thing. That and I, I work with other artists. Mm -hmm. I teach mm -hmm. some. So I mean that's that you learn as much from that as they do. Right. I mean, you're always learning. Mm -hmm. So that just working with other people is a good avenue mm -hmm. to all of a sudden you discover, well, you know, I didn't even know I could do that. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's just something that being, plus it makes it, I like to see people succeed. Right. And it's a, it, I, I, hopefully I'm a shortcut. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what I that's consider. Really it's good. taken like me that. so uh -huh. long to learn that hopefully I'm a shortcut and I can say, you know, here, let me show you this real quick and it makes it easier. That's really a cool attitude. Um, I like that. Well, if you yeah. make yourself available, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times you do get stuck in the studio and that's what you do for right. hour after hour after hour. So it's really nice to get out, mm -hmm. you know, take a day for yourself, go do photography, mm -hmm. you know. Well, and that brings us to this now, that you went down to a, a zoo in Florida mm -hmm. and took pictures. Yep. And that's where this painting came that, from. This one, yes. And how did it get to where it is now? Um, when I when I look at, I, I take as many photos, I use the shotgun approach. Mm -hmm. I, I, I take, a, I end up with good photos. But I'm not a professional photographer. So you end up so with the best too. thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the best thing to do, digital age is the wonderful thing. Yes. It's the great equalizer. I take a hundred pictures of one animal, I may end up with five or six really exceptional shots. Uh-huh. The, from there it's training. Accidentally, huh? Yeah, well, yes, but from there it's training your eye to <laughs> right. see the exceptional exactly. shots. Mm -hmm. And then it's just a matter of conveying it. I mean, I think once you can paint, you know, I told somebody that if you can paint an egg, you can paint anything. Right. Because an egg, unbelievable, as simple of an object as it is, is very difficult it's to a paint. Tough one. Mm -hmm. It changes in all directions. Mm -hmm. It picks up all different colors of light, all different colors of shadow. So really, you can't say, "Well, I can't paint portraits, or right. I can't do animals, or I can't do still life." If you can paint, you, you can do anything. Right. So there, it's just a matter of uh, you. You learn to see better. Mm -hmm. That was one of the uh, lessons I learned early from that friend of mine. Was he said you, your best thing that you're going to develop is your eye. Uh -huh. He said your hand coordination and stuff will come. But he says, but you'll learn to see better. And I thought when I started out, I saw pretty good. I mean, I thought I was right. encompassing Everybody, a lot yeah. in my work. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing, nothing at all. Years of practice, uh, miles behind the paintbrush. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Years of practice, your, your, your hands develop, but your eye develops more keenly than that. That's really interesting. Um, when yeah. you see detail, after a couple of years, detail is even way beyond what, what you understood it to be. Well, and I was asking you about the background on this, and, and I was really impressed with the, the thought process that went into it. Because, you know, most people look at it and they see, they see the animal. But the background is a very interesting concept. Sure it is. Sure know? it is. Um, you know, it's with all portrait work, it doesn't have to be a realistic mm -hmm. background, it doesn't have to be a, a, this is almost would be considered a faux finish. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. it's almost treated as a faux finish. And certain subjects, depending on how you want to integrate them, um, I don't 
make trips to Africa and right. stuff where these animals are from. So it's really hard for me to depict a natural setting. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times I'll just use this particular uh, background for that animal. Mm -hmm. Or if it's like the horse where I know the animal well, I right. used to stop and photograph it regularly, I, I'm very comfortable putting in its environment. Well, and one thing you were telling me about the horse, too, is, is the fact that if you get up close and you look at this horse, the detail on the horse itself is precise, very finite, a lot of, lot of intricate detail. The background, on the other hand, is representative. Sure. Um, I want to focus on uh -huh. the horse. And yet, everybody sees the horse, it's going to be more familiar in its natural setting. Right. Mm -hmm. So I take a lot of photographs of the area around mm -hmm. the animal, mm -hmm. and I work it up with the animal. Um, color's relevant, yeah. and it's only relevant to what it's next to. Mm -hmm. You can take a green, uh, people have a hard time with greens, but there may be 20 different greens in a painting, right. and just because that one's there doesn't mean it's going to look the same as it will somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to depict space. I like depth in, in, in a setting. So in order to manipulate those colors, that's where you work on your backgrounds and you build it up with the, right. the image right. itself uh -huh. as, as a whole. One like this, where I wanted that more faux background, the emphasis is on finding colors that harmonize with the, the right. object mm -hmm. and yet with it with themselves. And give it the depth. Sure, too, that you sure. Uh -huh. I didn't want it just a one solid color background. Right. Mm -hmm. Not that that doesn't work. I've had dark backgrounds with horse portraits mm -hmm. that gives it a very dr dramatic effect. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it gives it a dramatic look mm -hmm. and a dramatic effect, just as you would do a, a person's portrait. Yeah. You know, sometimes they're really nice outside with a sunny disposition, mm -hmm. but a more serious portrait, a lot of times it's just a very dark. Uh, Rembrandt, obviously, was very famous for that, right. having the chiaroscuro look where the image is coming out of the background. It's interesting that you mention Rembrandt because I do see a Rembrandt-like technique with you, well, you know? I study a lot of art, mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, one of the things that always somebody comes up and they're, they're amazed by a piece of work and they say, well, I can't draw a straight line. Well, that's not my, the point. you know, that's not the point. I can't draw a straight line either. I don't. I, it's rare. I avoid straight lines. Right. You know, because that can really throw a painting well out. But if you study art, uh, uh, Monet, yeah. Monet probably didn't even care what a straight line looked like mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it was an impressionistic view. But your feeling was of the color and the light. They were a master right. of knowing light and how it was affected, and knowing color and how colors related to each other. Right. And so, you know, you, you don't want to limit yourself by saying, well, I can't draw. Right. It's finding what you really enjoy and learning how to do that. Now, um, you started with drawing, you said, as a child and so forth. Do you, when you start a piece like this, do you draw it first? Um, I use varying approaches. Uh -huh. uh, I trace sometimes uh -huh. if I find a specific image. If I do a drawing, it's nothing more than a very simple outline. Right. Uh, especially with animals, placement is yeah, placement is the most important mm -hmm. thing. If the eye is off right. and it's not spaced properly, then it's not going to look right. right. Mm -hmm. So initially, it's just a matter of getting all the little elements, the nostrils, the mouth, in a place. Right. But that's going to be developed as a whole when, mm -hmm. when you're mm -hmm. painting something that looks realistic or in the round, so to speak. Um, those things are going to be different than the line drawing. Right. But you want to make sure that, especially with portraits, a person's portrait, if right. they're smiling, you want to make sure the, the line between the teeth is where it's supposed to be. Yeah, <laughs> so, so it's just it's just a process. Mm -hmm. I, I you know a guy looked at me funny. Uh, one one of the friends of mine that I paint with, he would blow up paintings uh -huh. and trace from it, and he owns a print shop. So that was his initial reaction. Was I just blow them up? And but he says I'm sitting here looking at this. I says well. I paint from my monitor, and a light bulb went off, and he's like, I said, you know, I have a 22-inch monitor in my studio, uh -huh. and, and I'm a studio painter. I said, why wouldn't I? Right. And he goes, well, what about when you transfer images? I said, well, I just put a piece of tracing paper over the monitor, and I draw <laughs> on it. <laughs> he looked, but it, you know, it works. I don't, you know, some people love to draw. They right. would sit down and do that entire image in full detail, and then, paint. and then paint over it. Mm -hmm. I like to paint. I yeah. like to push color so around. The drawing is so the basic. The drawing's the basic. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's just mm -hmm. a starting point. Sometimes I go from there. Um, I, I the, the initial process, especially in a portrait, mm -hmm. I first. 
Right. Always don't say, always I first. If you can't get that right, then why bother going right. any further? Mm -hmm. You have to have that. So you start with the hardest part, and then once you start filling in a little bit more, Working the out. eye's not finished at that point. Mm -hmm. it's well, and that's another thing. Your paintings go beyond the usual, just paint it on, and stop at the painting. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's... Uh, Again, that's experience. Mm -hmm. Once you start to understand more and more, I spend less and less time looking at the image and more at the painting. And more at the painting. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with the background. That's why I build them up together. Right. I maybe additionally use the photograph to get the, the direction of it. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times in a background, especially if it's going to be a detailed background, uh, you incorporate that to lead you to the subject. Right. In a case like this, I like diagonals. Right. So the horizon in the, in the background there leads you into the eye mm -hmm. of the animal. Mm -hmm. Or there may be color and lighting. You use light right. and shadow as, in the background to bring you around to a specific spot in right. the painting. Because that's the idea, is to bring your, mm -hmm. your, yourself back. But to move you through the painting as well. Right. And so uh, you, you set all that up in reference to that image but initially you, I do a quick outline and then I start having fun and then you start laying on paint and when you finish with paint then you start another process many well times. yeah it, it, good paintings I mean they should be varnished mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's one thing it brings out the color uh, I paint in a lot of layers right. and a lot of times it's like it's like putting a photograph under glass right. a, a, a good photograph is is nice but once it's got that glass over it and it starts to bring the color out, that's when you see that finished image. Exactly. So I learned uh, being a house painter, mm -hmm. I, I varnished a lot of furniture. So doing that on a painting became very natural. Right. Uh, you know, a lot of painters initially won't varnish because they're afraid of ruining what they'd already, the, what they'd already spent mm -hmm. so much time right. in. But in reality, it's better for the image. It protects it from the environment. That's very important, exactly. you know, we exactly. want to do that. It gives it longevity. Uh, longevity. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, there's no sense putting three months of your life into something that's not going to be around ten years later. Exactly. Now, when you were painting the building, the Blue Ridge Art Space, you were working on this poor horse. And yes, you kept yeah. bringing him in and showing him to me in various phases. And every time you'd bring him in, there was another depth to it, another sure, dimension. Sure. And when you brought him in and he'd been glazed, that was just a whole nother, oh, oh yeah, you know, yeah. the color just suddenly started really coming out. Yep, you know? yep. Well, you work background with the image at the same time because if you're doing layers of it, mm -hmm. it allows you to suddenly say, okay, I want to push that area back in the painting right. or right. I want to bring that area forward. And that's by manipulating colors. And a lot of it's just principles. It's right. very simple principles that anybody can learn mm -hmm. um, that just explains it. Yeah. It's, it's like having a guideline to, to reading a story, right. uh, an outline. You, you, you appreciate it more when you understand the overall, mm -hmm. but that's all it is, is it's just learning the basics and applying them as a whole. And, and, right. and paying attention. Well, sure, sure, attention. Yeah. yeah. That's where developing the eye comes in. I said you'll learn to see better. Now, if you're really interested in watching Pat with painting, and, and it is kind of, you know, a great experience to watch someone paint, you're going to be at the Edgewood Cottage in yes, July. Yes, yes, And you will be doing some painting Yes, there. Yes, I will. Uh -huh. I'm, hopefully I'll have time to. Uh, <laughs> we're going to set up, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful program to uh -huh. start with. They do that for the artists in the community. And it's just a great thing. They, they, we'll have 12 artists, 12 exceptional artists right. that do the whole summer program. They're generous enough to give us this building as our own for a week. Right. And that's basically what it is. They're giving us a studio to come in and, and to show our work. Right. Um, they're giving us an opportunity to come in and set up and do demonstrations for people. Because a lot of people, they, they like to see the processes. Yes, so if, uh, the 18th of July for that week, I'll be going in and mm -hmm. setting up every morning and taking my paints in and a whole bunch of wonderful paintings. That are already um, finished. Sure, and yeah, I'll, I'll bring some that are, you know, the, they let us mm -hmm. decorate with paintings that, that are done and then also work on right. things while we're there. And so you and, can come in and interact with Pat, you can watch him paint, you can see his finished works. But before that, you can always go by the Blue Ridge Art Space and see his finished oh, yeah, works yeah. there. We're, we're going to have it set uh -huh. up for a month. Uh -huh. uh, so, so it's going to be something that's going to be very enjoyable. Right, until the Tuesday after the 4th of July. That is when your work will come right, down. Right, right. And so uh, between now and that point, make sure that you get time to come by. And we're there a lot, but the gift shop hours, which is when the galleries are definitely accessible, even when 
other things might be going on. Uh, the gift shop hours are now 11 to 6 on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And so that will give you plenty of time to come in and enjoy the artwork. And then if you happen to see us parked there, you can come on in. We've got the door unlocked. And you can come check it out. We're very, very open about letting people share and share with the work. We want to share it with as many people as possible. Also, Pat mentioned that he teaches. We are uh, starting an entire series of classes and workshops, both in visual arts and also we're offering some music teachers opportunities to teach as well. In the fall, the community music school will kick in, and they will take on all of the uh, music education that goes on in the building. But the uh, classes and workshops in the arts and the crafts are done in partnership with the Craft Enrichment Program, and also the Arts Council does its own. And Pat's going to be teaching a couple of those. We're working on that right now. We'll soon be announcing yep, yep, what you'll be teaching. Yep. Uh, things having to do with framing, glazing, uh, presentation. Setting up your own website. Mm -hmm. A lot That's of artists, marketing. Yeah, right. marketing uh -huh. uh, artists, a lot of times, it's, it's not a complicated process. Right. It's like everything else. You just need a boost in the right direction. Jump in the right Shortcut. Mm -hmm. And so, Jump off the cliff. Yep, yep. And then <laughs> so we're going to try to get more people involved in that too. Stay in touch with all of this. Pat has a website, patgrantstudios.com. Yep. And you can see a lot of his work. And it looks great on his website, but it looks even better in person. Yeah, please so come just by. just got to come check it yeah, out. Please come by. And so also check out his website. Check the Arts Council website, watauga-arts.org, for this and so much more. Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years.